India. It's the acid test for every traveller. You'll either love it or hate it, but one thing is assured, it will change your perspective on life forever. In 2007, New Delhi's International Airport was chaotic amidst construction of a new terminal for the 2010 Commonwealth Games. Four years on, India delivered, with a new international terminal so modern it would give any airport in the world a run for its money. My first stop was the Kutub Minar in New Delhi's south. It's a deceptively large complex, requiring two to three hours to really be able to take in. Built around the 12th century AD by the slave dynasty, it predates the Mughal Empire and is the world's tallest freestanding minaret. It is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the official symbol of New Delhi. My next stop was Humayun's tomb. This 16th century tomb is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's built on a 30-acre Persian-style garden called Charbagh, literally four gardens, and at the time was the largest of its kind built in this part of the world. The tomb of the second Mughal emperor is on the upper floor of this structure. To truly take in this location takes a couple of hours. The Red Fort is yet another UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was built by the Emperor Shah Jahan in the 17th century out of red sandstone. It's the location at which the Indian national flag was hoisted for the first time in independent India. This is not a location to be missed when you're in New Delhi. However, don't plan on coming here on the 15th of August or the 26th of January. These are days on which the nation celebrates its independence and its pride as a republic, with ceremonies centered around this location. The Mughal city of Agra was my second stop while touring India's Golden Triangle. Everyone comes to Agra to see the Taj Mahal, but there's a whole lot more to see over here. Everyone says that you only need one day. I recommend that you take two. If you thought that the Red Fort in New Delhi was worth looking at, Agra Fort will make it pale in comparison. This fort covers an area of 94 acres. Its origins are somewhat lost in time, but the earliest mentions in historical records come back from around the 11th century. It was built by the third Mughal Emperor Akbar the Great, and it too is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Allow yourself about four hours to take this in. The Taj Mahal needs no introduction. A UNESCO World Heritage Site was built as a tomb by the fifth Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan for his wife Mumtaz. The best views of the Taj Mahal are from the other side of the Yamuna, and it changes colour along with the light. Mughal Emperors did not do mausoleums by halves. Sikandra is the tomb of the third Mughal Emperor Akbar the Great. Completed in the early 17th century by his son Jahangir, it is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Allow yourself about two hours to take this in completely. Jaipur was the third leg of my tour of India's Golden Triangle. The iconic pink city is perhaps one of the most culturally rich destinations that you could hope to visit while in India. The Hawa Mahal was my first stop. This five-story palace with its 953 windows were where the ladies of the royal household would observe activities in the streets from. Jaipur City Palace was my next stop. Still a functioning residence to the royal family of Jaipur, one can comfortably spend three or four hours around here. The architecture of the palace has influences from Europe, Persia and traditional Rajput architecture. There's a lot to see over here, but my personal favourite is the area called Pitam Nilath Chauk, and specifically Riddhi Pol, or the Gates of the Seasons. Across the street from the city palace is Jaipur's Jantar Mantar. It's a collection of astronomical instruments that the royal family used to use. It too is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. My last stop in Jaipur was the Amer Fort. It lies about 40 minutes to the north and one can get there via taxi. On the way one crosses a palace called the Jalmahal, or the Water Palace, an old Rajput palace that's been submerged in a lake. Amer is a UNESCO World Heritage Site as well. And what the fort lacks in surface area, it makes up in its vertical structures and passageways. This is a marvel of Rajput architecture and will comfortably take about four hours to truly take in. And if you want a truly authentic experience, consider taking an elephant ride to get there. India is not a destination for everyone, but it's a destination that everyone should experience at least once in their lifetime. You'll find peace within its chaos, calm within its intensity, and discover yourself after feeling truly lost. 
No other nation polarizes and contrasts all at the same time the way India does. If you're about to embark on a visit to this land of culture, history, color, and ritual, be prepared to be amazed as you never have been in the past.